there's a great danger in a book like this. It can just become a kind of turgid porridge of facts. You try and throw everything in and you're dealing at such a level of abstraction that you don't engage the reader. So my job is to balance what people assume is going to be there, some of which is, with what I feel needs to be there and what is going to make people think afresh. The first thing I did was to read other general world histories and lots or look at lots of timelines to try and give myself a sort of sense of the overall architecture. I then spent a huge amount of time, frankly, in libraries. Um, I couldn't have done this without the London Library. It is my sort of spiritual home and what I was doing is what I would call reading sideways a lot of the time. So I would decide I wanted uh, to do a story about um, the early Christianity inside the Roman Empire and I would read books about that and I would keep narrowing down until I found a story that seemed to me to be something that would work. Then I'm out on the road a lot. Um, and so I'm talking to archaeologists, I'm talking to the curators of museums from Peru to Israel, Turkey, wherever. Um, I'm, I'm following things up, I'm talking to uh, full-time historians um, at universities, at the Open University, um, and then I come back and I finally start to shape uh, the book as it's emerged. I don't have teams of uh, PhD students or any other kind of academic researchers working with me. I like to do my own primary research, mainly because I don't know what I'm looking for until I've found it. And so it's very hard to direct anybody else. That's what I find. Um, but when it comes to the television series, the BBC did have groups of researchers. We had the help of the Open University and we had our own researchers. And their job was very often to find the places where we should go to tell a story. Um, to, if we're going to tell the story of the Assyrians whacking the Israelites, where are we going to go? Probably Lachish. What's at Lachish? What else can we show from the Assyrian siege of Lachish? That kind of thing. And they're also, however, these people, very, very bright. Um, they gave me all sorts of suggestions, heckles, uh, critiqued what I was saying, criticised me. Um, we had some wonderful arguments out on the road. Um, and so... It's, it's a team game, it's a collaborative game. The book itself is not collaborative. The book itself, for all its flaws and any stronger points it may have, is all my responsibility. The stories I enjoyed most in the book are the ones where I had a kind of eureka moment sitting in uh, an obscure part of the library and I'm going through lots and lots of books and I suddenly see a connection that I hadn't, hadn't understood before or think of a way of telling a story that I hadn't seen before. And so, uh, for instance, um, I think the story of uh, Ashoka, the great Indian uh, Buddhist ruler, and the way his edicts, his, his uh, moral uh, commandments, were set out in a kind of stony broadcasting system, only cracked in Victorian times. A fantastic story, deserves to be better known. I thought, wow! When I first read the, what appears to be the first-hand account of an early Christian saint, Perpetua, um, in a Roman prison, uh, days before she is taken out and killed in the arena on the emperor's birthday, uh, and a shiver goes down my spine. This is probably well known to classicists in, mu in, in academic departments, but I think to most people watching, most people reading this book, they'll never have come across that story. Nothing more exciting than that.